Hey everyone, welcome back. It's theCUBE, day two, end of day two of our coverage of Dell Technologies World. Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We have been unpacking some fantastic content, a lot of announcements and news yesterday and today, as you know. We like to bring it from the main stage to the CUBE stage. One of our alumni is back with us to unpack some great announcements that came out this morning. Gil Schnorson is here, SVP and GM Edge Portfolio and Solutions at Dell. Great to have you back in person. Thank you, and great to be here again. Yeah, and Toby Gokol, did I do that okay? That's fine. All right, Perfect. Strategic Innovations Manager at Bosch. Welcome, gentlemen, great to have you. Thanks for having me. Gil, some great stuff came out this morning. We saw you on the main stage. Talk to us about Dell Native Edge. What is it, what is unique about it, and how is it an advantage for Dell and its customers? Well, Native Edge is a, um, an edge operation software platform um, that is um, um, going to help our customers simplify, or dramatically simplify, optimize and secure their edge operations entire, um, across their entire um, edge estate. Um, it is solving two very interesting problems at the same time. One is the ability to securely onboard devices with zero touch anywhere in the world. And another one is the ability to orchestrate applications to those devices, to data centers and to clouds to orchestrate a complete outcome. And we put those things together for the first time, I think, in the industry and, um, and expecting um, to add great value to our customers. So Toby, bring us into your world. Software, your shirt says software and digital solutions, so you're not selling dishwashers. Not at all. Although I just bought a Bosch dishwasher. I have one too. Very quiet. <laughs> I think decision. they're the best ones. <laughs> I, I just say, For I'm sure. just saying. I agree. For sure. <laughs> I've had many others, believe me. I swear at them. But Toast, tell, take us into your world. What, what, sure, uh, sure. so basically my role is um, an innovations manager. So together with our partners and customers, I bring groundbreaking solutions to life. And uh, we have been part of the Dell Edge design program for um, almost a year now. Our partnership almost spans 20, uh, two decades already, right, in which we have um, designed solutions for our manufacturing customers that help them optimize their op operations and also help them innovate faster. And with Native Edge, we actually have been part of the journey from a very early stage um, to this day. And um, exciting news. How did it get, get started? I mean, who sought out whom? How'd you meet? Um, was, it, was it Gil? Was it you sort of scouring the world? Because Dell launched this from essentially a, a, a white sheet of paper, right? I mean, that's right. So if you're asking about Native Edge itself, um, it's about a two year journey when Michael and the ELT decided to take a further look at the edge and the growth. and. The question we asked was, you know, are we adding enough value? Do we have a bigger role to play? Um, and we started talking to hundreds of customers. One of the advantages of being Dell Technologies is that if you want to talk to customers, it's not that hard, you know. <laughs> we have a lot of loyal customers globally. And so getting all of this feedback um, basically directed us to the point that there is a serious management problem that we decided to solve. And you're right, um, because what, what Dell management allows us to do is to take a you know, um, clean sheet and look at all of the diff different constraints at the edge and design for them. In other words, the challenges at the edge will never go away, but we can make them design points for that future product. The second part of this, as we started working towards this, we were looking for people who are experts. And Bosch is definitely an expert in the OT space. And so, you know, we talk about the fact that the edge business is going to bring OT and IT together well, it first starts with partnerships like that with people that understand. And you should know that um, when OT people and IT people get together, sometimes even the language it doesn't match. We say life cycle, we mean we can update stuff every, every week. They say life cycle, they mean do not change it for the next 25 years. It actually means the opposite between those two worlds. And so partnerships like that allow us to um, understand the needs. Um, and you know, hopefully, we can we can we can create that bridge for partnerships and obviously to our joint part, uh, customers later on. How are Dell and Bosch together helping to reimagine edge operations for customers? What's that? Talk, talk about how the technologies together are really helping flip that on the the traditional model on its head. I'll start. Yeah. So so native edge 
um, at its core is about edge operations. We make it a fine point not to add too much value so we can partner because this, there is a core competency that companies have. And so if we can get workloads from one place to the other, deploy them to edge locations, we can do that with everybody. But what is that payload? What is that application? What is that expertise? That's where uh, Bosch comes in with their own value. And they are the real people who understand the manufacturing environment. And so we can take what they do and we can help them facilitate it into edge devices. It's a great solution, but Tobias, it's the... Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at a shop floor nowadays, right, you see a huge heterogeneity of devices, of machines. You see a proliferation of disparate technology at the edge. And you see data and application silos, which is basically, yeah, a challenge if you want to create that digital backbone of your factory of the future and we experience that um, ourselves. And there is a very specific challenge um, um, arising, which is how to actually deploy applications throughout the entire Edge estate and how to run your lifecycle management, especially when you have this um, huge heterogeneity. And this is where native Edge comes into play, giving us um, faster time to value, right? Helping us innovate faster and also saving resources, which is fantastic. I, I saw, I was walking around here and I snapped a picture of this chart. It said, the edge is opposite of cloud, okay? And it said, and I, I want to test this. It said, limited compute. Most deployments are one to three servers. Limited network, high latency, low bandwidth, extended outages. Many sites, different than cloud, must, must run uh, near, many near identical sites. Limited IT, few trained IT at the edge locations, few dedicated to edge in central IT. Accurate description, what they get right, what they get wrong, and what does that mean for you? You want to go first? Go first? Yeah, yeah. It's your world, right? So is that a, an accurate description of the edge? It is. I would say, yeah. Okay, so why do you need him? So basically, we want to provide a consistent customer or user experience, right? And by automating the application deployment or the orchestration of the deployment, we give our customers the possibility to actually securely and remotely deploy applications with one single click, which is actually unheard of till today, right? And as said, um, this gives us a much faster time to value. I mean, in an essence, we provide the application layer, the software layer, but Bosch in its core is not um, a hardware manufacturer or is not having um, an application framework like Native Edge. So I think it absolutely makes sense that we join forces, and um, as you rightly said, I mean, we are one of the major OT players. Did you notice you asked a very long question, you've got a German person, an Israeli person, <laughs> and you got an answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but the answer to that last one, you know, few IT resources, is not to bring, to hire a bunch of IT experts. It's to, it's to reduce the need for that. We say few IT resources, but we, we're kind of doing it at the service. What we really mean is, is not enough skilled personnel. Yes. They could be IT, there could be, like for example, in Dell Manufacturing, there's an, a um, manufacturing engineering team. Um, it doesn't have to be IT, but when it comes to you know, their remote location, their devices, the, the problem with lack of skills is that you have nobody to deploy even troubleshoot, imagine something goes wrong. In a data center, somebody calls and say, well, please you know, download the logs, send something to me. What are you going to do in the store? Who is going to be that person that you know, goes in and double clicks and selects? So we have to assume, and part of the design of, of Native Edge, it assumes there is nobody skilled on the other side at all. That's a design point. And from there, you, if, you do, if you think like that, you build it differently because you know you don't have anybody to count on. Um, so it's not the lack of IT, but it's a lack of skilled people on the other end. Yeah, and I IT think that's not. what they meant in the slide. They yeah, ran yeah. out of PowerPoint space. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we say that too, but we yeah, yeah, mean okay. it in a broader sense. What about, I mean, I know you talk about this all the time, the security model, because uh, you know, by this, maybe it's by design or maybe it's by default. The, the, the edge has been isolated, right? It's sort of air-gapped. Yeah. Right? Now it's not. So how are you addressing that? And, and what's the partnership doing about that? 
Shall I? Oh, you can, actually. So, let me give you a concrete example, right? So, Bosch is having this fantastic application which is called AI Shield, which is in its core an AI security solution that safeguards AI and ML models at the edge. Together with Native Edge, it becomes an end-to-end -end security solution where you basically order a Native Edge-enabled device from the Dell secure supply chain. It's manufactured, it's drop shipped, it's securely onboarded on the factory floor, and then you deploy um, an application like AI Shield on top of it, meaning that Native Edge secures your infrastructure and we take it one step further, we are actually um, securing or safeguarding your AI assets at the edge. So this is um, this is groundbreaking, to be very honest. And incredible. He said it. <laughs> incredibly important as the attack surface just continues to do this and it's amorphous and there's so much vulnerability everywhere. Being able to help secure the edge is it's, it's the not, attack a, not a nice to have, it's, it's essential. It's at the attack surface and it's also the consequences. So, when you have a security breach in a non-edge environment, it might be monetary, might be reputational, but in the edge environment, it could be human life. Yeah. It's at that extreme, right? Contamination of a water facility is, is life risky, or even, you know, even a, imagine a robotic arm that somebody decides to take over and swing, where there might be an operator. So, um, security is, Lisa, you said it, it's definitely an important thing because it's the number one inhibitor of why people don't do more things at the edge today. We talked about this, uh, you and I, in the pre-briefing, that you had to make a choice, you know, because there's so much diversity at the edge, and you know, in, in industry 4.0, and you had to make a choice to do, you do horizontal, and then partner and go deeper into the verticals, or you could have gone, I guess, I guess you could have gone deeper into verticals. It seems like an obvious thing now, but why did you make that decision and, and it, and where's that dividing line between the horizontal and the vertical? Yeah, first of all, look, we are a, hor a horizontal company. We are a company that's very good at horizontal and scale. And, um, you know, obviously technology and support and services, um, for us, you know, and I think we say that a lot these days, the ecosystem is important. Nobody can do it on their own, especially security, but everything else as well. Um, so it was very important for us to add value, but not too much value, because there are people that are better than us in many, many ways. So we wanted to stay just, you know, add just enough value so we can enable other people and partner. This was really important for us and, and that's um, kind of another design guideline we're living by because we want to partner with people that know more than us where it's not our core competency. But we're going to do a, a very good job in what we do know how to do, which is, you know, uh, building hardware, the operating environment, and the um, edge operation software. Okay, so that was a business model criterion that you set was you know leave enough for the partners to um, make money. Yeah, yeah. leave it. I, I don't think we are the ones leaving enough. I think this is you know just being pragmatic of who knows what and who's an expert. Um, well, okay, then it's flip that. It's it's really identify where you can add value. Exactly. That's because I want to add value to him yeah. because if I add value to him, then we can add value to an end user. If I couldn't add value to him, then we could never build together for an end user. So you know, that's how I look at it. I think Dell um, is, is able to add value to our ecosystem of partners so we can then go and add more value to our end users. So that's I'm inferring then it. that you're minimizing the, the vertical content, but you're enabling that presumably through APIs to allow. Yeah, we're not minimizing it, but we partner proactively. I mean, I mean in terms this. of what yeah, comes yeah. out of your factory. Absolutely, Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, okay, and that's your commitment long term. You're not going to end run these guys and compete, Absolutely. obviously. And and even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, well right, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a built-in barrier yeah. to entry, that's, that's right? So, how, wh what's the status of this? Where are you at? I mean, you know, we use uh, sometimes baseball yeah. analogies, if you probably. But maybe I'll start. So, Native Edge itself was announced today. Um, very exciting, obviously. And um, we'll be available um, in August. We say this summer, it's supposed to be August, and they'll give it there, there here and there. Um, and then we're off to the races, this, um, and, you know, and, and our um, design partners have access to it already. Yeah. And so they can see the code now, they can actually use it, they can design. Um, and building joint solution for customers takes time. It doesn't happen overnight, 
you have, there is a lot that goes into it. You have to really understand, you have to really um, look at the use case. You, um, it's like building yet another layer on top. And so we just started early, that's what we did. We started early with a technology that will come out soon and be prepared when, when it does come out. So that's the, that's the plan. And how will customers be able to buy it? Native Edge will be bought um, on subscription. Um, there is going to be a pricing model that's um, you know, uh, flexible per device under management. Um, they will buy the hardware based on what they need, so a consistent experience, but it could be a gateway or an industrial PC like Optiplex or a server that's done on purpose so we don't have to be cost prohibitive for people, for example, that they have 50,000 gas stations. Well, they're clearly not going to need a three node cluster of PowerEdge, but they may need you know, to do the same with an industrial PC. So they will buy the hardware and then the license or um, subscription to manage. And obviously when we partner, um, at this point they will buy the value from our partners separately. Yeah. Um, what we will do with software assets, we will then package them in a catalog that can be easily deployed. And that's kind of the joint work that we need to do. But commercially, I think that's going to be separate and I, I think it, it could stay like that for a while. So we only got to see part of the keynote today. But I understand there's this thing about uh, ice cream and a cow. And, what, what, explain. and an orange shirt. You get an orange shirt. You're going to get me good. Expl <laughs> explain that. We'll start, let's start with the ice cream and the cow. You're going you're gonna to wake up my uh, session PTSD yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you. I mean, for well, our song. So somebody put an example of a cow. Um, which is appropriate, right? There are sensors in farms. And so the whole point was that we have sensors all the way from the cow to the, uh, and then somebody decided to have even more fun and put a cow voice. Um, and and, and I, uh. I was lucky to have rehearsed it and heard it before, otherwise it would be a big surprise. But the moo? <laughs> the moo, yes. <laughs> yeah. And then actually, your boots. Um, one of our PR people suggested, I said that I, I wanted to remove it, but I wasn't uh, going to go uh, there. <laughs> but Lon, this is for you. This was his idea, so. <laughs> that's good. Thank you for not doing it on stage I know. in front of you know, 10,000 <laughs> people, but that's fine for the cube. That's good. Uh, but look, w we had fun. I think um, I, that's what's nice about Dell and, and you know, interaction with our customers is that we, we are allowing ourselves to have a little fun and be a little human. And I, I, for the most part, I like it. I, it would have been hard for me not to have that kind of interaction. And what's the orange photo? I, th I hear this will make you uh, blush. That's, that's, oh, it's making you blush already. <laughs> 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 you are. Well, I'll tell you, there was COVID, we were home, and we had an online um, um, event, and there was a competition, and they sent us t-shirts, and I, I was playing with an iPhone app, and I decided to get competitive, and so that's a lesson learned for all of uh, the people watching. You can never take back something that's sent in yeah. the digital ether, you can never untake, and so um, somebody found it, Jeff decided to use it. And uh. But he, <laughs> I understand he asked history. your permission. He didn't ask my permission, <laughs> but he, he But what are you going to say? You can't say no to Jeff. Right? right? No, it, I, I, look, as I said, it's part of the culture is we can get, you know, to have some fun and be human. That's important. It was actually a lot of fun. It's Good. Great. Last question for both of you as we wrap here our end of day two. What's next for the Dell Bosch partnership? What can we expect to hear? What can customers expect? You talked about availability, but what's next for these and two even companies? more specifically, like what are the what are the things that observers like us should be paying attention to along that what's next journey? How, how should we measure success? Well, look, I think a customer that has a preference for Bosch products and have a preference for Dell products, and they all have choice, they might not choose either of us. Um, may expect that you know um, a, a far superior automated experience for their edge devices installed or managed with an ease of use of deploying yep. Bosch applications to them. So an end-to-end -end stack that can be um, easily deployed and managed across all of their edge estate. Um, specifically with manufacturing, it's really important because we have a lot of conservative customers because they make things and they can just stop an experiment. And so, partnership like this gives a lot of, um, well, not just credibility, but really shows people that we have partnered with people that understand them, that would not take a risk, you know, if, you know, you know, unnecessary risk. And so, all of that, you know, is the ability to support, the ability to guarantee that um, we have we have tested, we know what we're doing. Um, there's a lot going into um, um, a partnership like that for end users. 
Definitely. OT, IT convergence, right? Or from shop floor to top floor. This is what we are now are working on, having validated solution designs, right? And this is going to be exciting times, so I think you should stay tuned to also see some groundbreaking stuff over the next month and years. We definitely will be tuned. I mean, we've been hearing so much about Edge. I've been sort of squinting through the data and you know, how much is actually in the cloud versus on-prem, and the Edge just blows everything up yep. in terms of opportunity. Uh, it is exciting. Very exciting. And congratulations. Well, yes, You're congratulations this on off Native the ground. Edge. Yes. Thank you, thank you. To both of you. We look forward to keeping our thank eyes you. on this space. It sounds like we're just scratching the surface. Guys, thank you so much for joining Dave and me tonight on thank the program. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me again. Our pleasure. Yeah. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE's day two coverage of Dell Technologies World Live from Las Vegas. Dave, tomorrow we've got a great lineup of guests. We've got Jeff Clark coming on. We'll get to break down his keynote from this morning. CMO Allison Dew is here. Doug Schmidt is here. We're going to expand more on the Dell Broadcom partnership. Lots going on tomorrow. You're going to want to be right here starting at 10 a.m. Pacific. We'll see you then. Thank you.